So today I thought I'd uh, go out and do some photographs and bring you guys along with me as well, as I often do. Uh, I'm going to be shooting the Mamiya RZ67 medium format camera, although this is a 6.7 camera, I've got a 6.45 back on it, so my negatives are going to be 6.45. And today's nice blue skies out there with some nice clouds, so I thought to myself it might be a nice opportunity to go out and try and find some sky shots using a red filter, which will darken my blues and make the white clouds pop. The film I'm going to be using today is Ilford's XP2. And Ilford's XP2 400 speed film is a C41 process film, but I've had great results with it in the past, processing it in black and white chemicals. Hopefully the Ilford police don't come banging on my door because I didn't develop it in C41. <laughs> Some of the people in the comments get the right ump. They're like, you can't do that with XP. It's just film. Go out and enjoy it and have some fun. And some of you may be thinking to yourself, why on earth is he going out and shooting an RZ67? It's quite a heavy camera. I'm not going to take a tripod. I'm just going to use it handheld and I'll put this strap on. I don't have one of those fancy straps with the lugs that sit on the on these little lug pins here. Um, I just use this strap with a nice bolt underneath. Later on, I'm going to get in the darkroom and if I've got a decent negative, hopefully I will have, I'll show you guys how I make a print in the darkroom. Hey, so I've come down the farm, you can see behind me I've got some nice clouds. Over that way, there's some darker clouds coming over, so I've got to move quick. The red filter's on there, I need to allow three stops. So uh, a 400 speed film, I've got my light meter in my pocket. I'll do some metering on the clouds and uh, see where we go from there. Let's start off with this tractor over here. I'm going to just look down and point up. So the cloud is kind of like my background. The sky is my background. Anything in the foreground is up to me to choose. And I'm going to choose some metering. I'm going to use this uh, spot meter and I'm going to spot meter on one of the clouds, which is going to give me middle grey and then just uh, overexpose it by a couple of stops. That should put me where I need to be. I'll look on the brightest cloud to see what the sun's out. Okay, now, uh, I want to shoot F11. That's about right, F11, one thousandth of a second. The, the uh, incident reading gave me the same thing. But then, of course, I need to allow three stops for that filter. So F11, one twenty-fifth of a second. There's the shutter speeds on top of the camera there. F11 dialed in, filter on, dark slide out. So I'm going to focus on the detail of the tractor and get those skies in the background. We'll see what happens. For good contrast in your photographs, you need strong light or you can manipulate contrast in Photoshop or even in the darkroom or even in development. But I'm using a red filter to enhance the sky and using the sunlight to hit hard on my shadows. So I don't need to change my metering. It's going to be the same when that sun comes out. It will brighten this tire up. So hopefully that won't be um, too dark. Well, that's interesting. Okay, I've got real close to that tyre's grip. Just wait for the sun. Where's that sky going? I'm going to come in this way a bit more, get that blue sky in more, clouds. There you go. So I've got really close to this tyre there. And this is a, um, a 90 millimetre lens, so I don't know, what's that equivalent of maybe 55 millimetre on 35 mil film? This is quite nice as well, this, uh, this old barn here. Sometimes you get doves on there, there's none there today. But the sun's over that way, so it's going to light the barn, and I've still got my clouds. Same settings, just going to need to find a composition. So it's kind of it's kind of tricky because I'm trying to get a nice composition on the barn, but also making sure the skies are where I want them to be. They're always moving, so it's just a waiting game. But unfortunately, the clouds have just uh, gone dark on me. Damn, the blue's over there. A big load of grey cloud coming in that side, so I'm going to have to come work over this side. See what I can find. Yep, there's a lot of dark cloud coming over. That's a shame. Uh, I've got blue over there though. Ah, uh, <laughs> wonderful. I have a quiz for you while I'm waiting for the raid to stop. Let us know in the comments. What's the name of this thing? I don't know. Big spiky thing. Finally, we've got blue skies again. I feel like it was about half hour just sitting around in them barns. I was really bored. Uh, I'm glad the blue skies are out. I can carry on. I'm going to quickly get these shots done, guys. I'll show you what I'm up to.
So I've pretty much ran out of blue skies. I'm looking around now and it's all gone hazy and gray. Uh, the thing with this is I'm chasing the blue all the time. Over that way, like I said, it's totally gray and it's the, the blue's over this side. So I've been trying to get compositions where I'm aimed at that blue sky just to see what happens, you know. Get a bit of time on my hands to go out and take some pictures and try something uh, creative maybe. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so you may have noticed that some of my photographs were proper dark and so did I. Now this scene was interesting. When I took a shot of this blue tractor, I was at f11 at 160th of a second. So I'm pretty much trying hard to keep the camera steady. As I took the first shot, I felt that I had moved. So I took a second shot straight after. And look, one is darker than the other, both at the same settings. So it makes sense why some of my shots were dark. It would appear that I've got a problem with the leaf shutter on the Mamiya not firing at the speed I chose. And I'm suspecting the batteries, or at least I hope so. Sometimes when I advance this, this camera, it takes a shot. I'm not pressing the button. I don't understand why it does that. It's uh, been doing it for uh, quite some time. Some, it just did it then. I advanced the film, it took a shot. Um, so I have to advance again, it's one frame missed. So not being one to stop there, I went back the next day to the farm, but this time I tried something different. Instead of metering on the cloud, I metered on the subject and waited for the sun to hit the spot. I took one photo without the red filter and one photo with, allowing for the free stops. Normally I only use a red filter for landscapes, but today I learned something, which I already knew, but I've never put into practice away from landscapes. A colour filter will make its own colour lighter, so in this case the red filter will make anything red or orange or even dark yellow in my scene appear a lot lighter than it actually is. Anything blue will appear a lot darker than it actually is. <laughs> So if you want killer contrast on your photos, try putting a red filter on, on a sunny, blue, cloudy day. Just stay away from red and orange subjects unless you want to throw a few spanners into the works. We can see where the filter has worked well in these sunny scenes. First of all, the wide shot of the farm. The trailer is blue, but it doesn't look out of touch, and the whole scene boasts contrast compared to that without the filter. And the scene with the tractor's trailer, which is blue with yellow wheels, the trailer is darker and the yellow wheels are slightly lighter. And we know the red tractor was a foul. That looks unnatural unless you think the tractor is white. And on all of these scenes, I metered on the subject, not on the sky this time. So this scene, I wanted to see what a shady shot looked like. Uh, the red filter didn't really do it much justice. It just darkened my subject. So I feel that sunlit scenes are best going forward. The scene of the scrapped car, you can see the car is lighter. And also this scene of the tractor warning light, which is orange, is also lighter. But overall, the, all the shots that were taken in the sunlight really did pull out a killer contrast. This scene was probably the most neutral with no colour influence and you can see the red filter has given it more pizzazz in the sky. 
I probably wouldn't use a red filter unless I wanted those deep blue skies and popping clouds in my scene. I can't see any point of shooting street photography without any blue skies um, with a red filter. And don't forget that all films react differently to colour and have their own spectral sensitivity towards colours. So it's a case of getting used to a particular film and to see what it does with your red filter. Ilford FP4, for example, may render my reds differently than the T-Max 400 that I used. So with the negative on the enlarger, I'm projecting the negative down onto the baseboard. I've already made my measurements using this easel here. So this is a 16 by 12 inch paper. And you can see I'm just leaving a slight white border around. So I'm leaving the whole frame of the negative inside uh, the paper. And I'm leaving this white border around the edge, which is nice for framing and stuff. I'm just doing some quick focus checks here. And I'm just looking through at the grain on the film. It's so fine. Very fine indeed. This was developed in 510 Pyro. And this is Ilford's XP2400 the C41 film. So I've put my test strip right across the tyre. That's the first thing I'm going to test is the tyre. Um, not the sky, I'm going to test the tyre first. Five second increments. This is two and a half grade filter. I'm, I'm quite happy because I'm not, I don't think I'm going to have to mess around too much with the contrast. You can see the white cloud there, a bit of sky. But let's do another test strip at five seconds across this side now coming from the sky through the tire into the black hole area of the wheel. See how that looks. So this is my kind of full length, if you like, uh, six seconds. And you can see I've got the nice contrast in the sky with that red filter popped out for me. The sunlight is hitting the tire, which is what I exactly aimed for at the time I took the shot. I think I'm quite happy. I mean, how far do you need to go before you're happy? If I look at something and go, do you know what? I'm, that looks good to me. Let's put a piece of paper underneath and do six seconds. And you can see between the two prints, that's the one at uh, six seconds I did and this one at four seconds. So the four second one, I think is much better. The clouds aren't as contrasty, they aren't as dark. I don't know, what do you guys think? This one or this one? Left or right? Number one or number two? You can guys let me know in the comments which one you think is best. But I think, uh, I prefer this one here at number one because it's uh, just a little bit less obvious in the clouds it's I don't, I don't know but I quite like this one. Oh shit and yeah I think I prefer the six second enlargement that I did there a little bit darker a little bit more punchier a little bit more dramatic so um, that's the one that I like and I write that down on my notes uh, for next time I want to print that negative so it's always good fun to play around with different stuff and whatever is at our disposal such as filters for black and white photography you can go online and you can read up what a yellow filter does an orange filter green blue or red and it will give you a bald mark of you know where you are and it will say this is what it does in a nutshell but until you actually get out with your camera and your film and your development and everything else and start playing with it that's when you really start to understand it so i think it's important to you know grab hold of whatever filters you've got use them and just use them in different situ uh, situations different lighting conditions different scenarios and see how they work out for you so anyway guys hope you enjoyed the video the full length darkroom session that i've been doing in this evening is going to be out there for you guys on patreon and also the youtube members area link is in the description if you want to join that and uh, see more content Content that's on there other than that thanks very much for watching hope you enjoyed the video thanks for the support i'll catch you next time get out shooting